This video covers how to implement custom logic in the SAP Cloud Application Program model and how to use debugging capabilities in the SAP Business Application Studio. Basically, everything that happens in CAP at runtime is a so-called event. So basically, all implementations you do are reactions on events that could be, for example, synchronous requests coming from our data services with CRUD operations, coming from REST methods, or by custom defined actions and functions which aren't necessarily bound to an entity, or asynchronous event messages on an entity level or by custom defined events from, uh, coming from the enterprise messaging service. Until now, we haven't defined any custom logic yet. We have only defined the services in our catalog service CDS and in our stats service CDS file. And those bring us fully CRUD plus Q enabled operations, depending on the annotations for the service or the entity itself with restrictions to read only, for example, or that they are not insertable or deletable. To enhance those logics, so-called generic handlers provided by the CAP runtime can be enhanced by custom handlers provided in CAP-based projects. There are different use cases for custom handlers. For example, if you want to implement domain-specific programmatic validations, you can hook in before the actual generic handler by CAP is executed. You can override the generic handler for the CRUD plus Q operations by CAP itself. Or you can hook in and execute logic after the generic handler were executed and the request is successfully completed. So how do we assign actual custom handlers to particular services? In Node.js, you could either say we create a file equally named to the already created service definition .cds file with the ending js, or we could provide a annotation called impl, which is pointing to the actual JavaScript file containing the custom logic. In Java, it's a little bit different. You have the component annotation for Spring Boot plus the service name pointing to the fully qualified service. And additionally, implementing a class implementing the event handler interface. So how do we register actual event handlers in our coding? That happens using the actual event type. Is it on, is it before or after the generic handler? So on overrides the generic handler before executes before the generic handler is executed and the after event is executed whenever a generic handler was already ended. You can define which operation you wanna hook in. Is it create operation, uh, operation? Is it the update operation? Is it the read operation? You can define if it's for a particular entity or if it's for all entities. And it's very similar in Java using the annotations. So let's create a file for our custom logic. We will do it with the implicit assignment. So we'll create a JavaScript file equally named to the service definition. So let's create a file for our catalog service. The file should have the same name as the CDS file but with a different file ending. This time it's .js for a cap-based project in Node.js. And I'll paste in the first bit of coding, which we will execute in a second. Whenever the application is started, the cap runtime initiated the service provider, which we'll get as a parameter here. And we can then, for example, log out the name of the service and at which path the service is actually available. 
So let's start the application. And we'll then see that not only CDS by default is logging already that there is an implementation for the catalog service, but also our bit of coding is locked to the console during the startup of the application. Let's then create a event handler for the after operation. So whenever books were read and the generic handler is already completed, I then want to get the data and manipulate it afterwards. So I get the service object and say whenever we have a read operation on the books entity, give me all the data you have. And let me do something with that. And for example, we can say we want to log it out. And I just want to log the whole array which I get here. Let's now use CDS Watch. So whenever we change something in the JavaScript file, the application is automatically restarted. To test our actual implementation, we will create a new HTTP file. So we can send HTTP requests to our endpoint using the REST client of the SAP Business Application Studio. And as we've defined the event handler for a read operation on the books entity, we'll also send the request to that endpoint. And we should now see in the console the output of the array which was given to the event handler on the after operation. And as you can see, the endpoint catalog.books was reached and our custom logic locked out the actual data to the console. Additionally, I want to show you how to debug the application. So whenever something goes wrong or if you want to dig in deeper, it's always good to have the option to debug the application. So let's open the debugger. You can simply start it with uh, the menu debug and start debugging. And I've set two breakpoints. The first one is on line three and the second one on line six. And you'll now get a debug console on the top of the page. And we can now inspect several things. For example, we can have a look at what the service object brings us with all kinds of information about the service itself, the namespace, for example, or which entities we have in here. But not only by clicking it, we can also say and execute things uh, in the line on the bottom. For example, we can have a look at which keys the entities brings us. And we can see that the service, our catalog service has three entities, offers, books, and orders, for example. But also what we've just seen on the console, if we resume and get to our second breakpoint, once we send a request to that endpoint, we'll now be in the line where we locked out the content of the array, for example. We can do similar things here, for example, and say that the array has seven entries with seven objects and can inspect those things. So let's stop the application in debugging mode now using the items on the left and go over to actually manipulate the data after the generic handler is executed in our custom handler. So let's actually implement the custom logic for our custom handler in the after event whenever a generic handler was successfully completed. We'll get the option to execute logic here. I'll implement some logic to discount certain books based on the stock. I'll do that the simplest way as it is possible. There are other ways to do it in shorter forms, um, but we'll keep it as it is. So we have a new array for our return statement. And let's loop over the books we get here. So we get all the books which the generic handler read from the database. And for each item in the array, 
we want to execute logic. So if the stock of a book is greater than 500, we want to set the title for a book to 10% off and concatenate it with the actual title of the book. And add the book once again to the new array and return the new array. As I said, there are other options to implement the logic, but that's basically how to show mani uh, manipulate data and give it back to the cap framework. You can also log it out to compare how it looked like before and after the manipulation. Therefore, let's also start our application and let's see what books we have. Right now, we have a couple of books which have more than 300 books in stock. For example, with the ID 251, 252, and 421. Those should have now a title with 10% off and then the actual title. So let's send the request. We have built in the steps before. And as you can see, we have now the books with more than 1000 books in stock with a different title, which we implemented in the logic in the catalog service.js file. What we haven't done yet, we will change the file name and use the at impl annotation to actually point to a different file and not a file which has the same name as the actual service. So our file right now is named catalog minus service chairs. Let's rename that one to cat service chairs. And you'll see that cap isn't recognizing the cat minus service chairs cause it's not in the, named in the same way as the actual service CDS file. So there's no implementation information for the catalog service. So let's add the annotation we've seen in the documentation and point to the file which we've renamed, which is cat minus service JS, located in the SRV directory. And if we save the file, the application should restart and should point to the custom logic implementation in cat service JS. So here we go, cap is recognizing that file because of the annotation we've added to the service definition. That's it about how to implement custom logic in a Node.js based cap project and how to use the debugging capabilities in the SAP Business Application Studio. Thanks for watching.